All right, so it's the next day. Yeah, next day, same video. Same video. It's actually really nice out. I don't know how many more days we're going to get like this, but we're going to try to get this thing done and see if we can get some rips done while it's still nice out. Yep. Don't know if it's going to happen today, but we're going to show you how to do head studs now. Let's start with that. Basically, you get your heat shield out of here. Uh, I believe, if I remember right, there's maybe three 10 millimeters and one plastic clip on the backside. So those two, there's one on the side by the exhaust and one underneath. We'll try to show you that as we go along. We got a time lapse rolling again. Uh, and then once you get that heat shield out of here, you can pull your spark plug boots, get that out of there. Make sure you blow everything off again. I kind of washed this thing off in the engine area because we've been doing some ripping testing lately so uh, blow it off with some air compressed uh, compressed air so to make sure you don't get nothing down in the valve cover um, once you get that done you can pull these torques they're t40s you got two there two there make sure you don't lose another rubber grommets or the seals if uh, you see any leaks around the motor or around the seals around the bolts change it they are reusable but if they're leaking obviously it's not going to reseal All right, so the heat shield going over the top of the turbo, I told you had those two bolts and a side bolt. There's another bolt back this way and it takes the second side shield off. You might as well just go ahead and get that out of your way too. Then uh, the two bolts that are here above the turbo, and I said there was one plastic clip. There's two plastic clips. I forgot about that, but uh, last night was a long night. But anyways, to get the valve cover out, I found the easiest is to, you got a bolt in that corner, you got a bolt in that corner. Once you pull them bolts, and then you got three bolts here that hold the back of the bed down, then you can lift the bed like this. You don't need to take the bed out to do this job. It would be easier, but you can't get the valve cover out if you look in here. Well, mm -hmm. see, so you can't get the valve cover out. Yep. You can pull on the bed all you want, and it ain't gonna come out, but just by loosening it up allows the valve cover to come out. Okay. So that will save you some time. You got to save this gasket here. Make sure it's good. Obviously, I didn't have any leaks around this. There is, they, uh, it's like half moon shape where the cam's at, so you got to pop it out right here. If it didn't want to be stuck. Yeah, I think mine did the same thing. There we go. Just don't rip it because you can reuse it. So there's the gasket. Still good. wasn't really It wasn't leaking or nothing. So that's that valve cover. So the grommets I was telling you about. Here's well, here they are right here. So these are your valve cover grommets. You lose them, you're going to be leaking. So when you pull them out, just make sure you get these out of your way because when you go to pull the valve cover up, they could fall, fall in the pan or between the engine and motor, or motor and trans. That's what we got going, so I'll show you guys the next step. Alright guys, so I have to get the valve cover off. You need to pull your clutch cover off and rotate the primary counterclockwise. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. Pull your plugs, rotate it counterclockwise. And I'll show you these marks over here in a second, but you basically rotate it to the marks over here line up. These, there's a notch here and here, here and here on each end of each cam. Those will be straight and in a line. The exhaust lobe will be pointing out. The intake lobe will point out this way. And then when you come around this side, there's a couple things you can look at. 
You just want to make sure that it's top dead center before you pull anything apart. So, this is your intake side. Here's your intake. Uh, so basically, it, how you know intake and exhaust is this side of the motor, the exhaust comes out because there's your exhaust pipe, and this side, your intake. So just for people that don't know, that's the easiest way to look and into both it. Both camshafts are also labeled I and E. Well, both of them are labeled both ways. So this oh, one, yeah, yeah. this one says intake, and then right here says exhaust. I've got it marked over it. I don't really necessarily need that, but basically, like the factory, if you look right here, there's a yellow dot and a yellow dot and a yellow dot and a yellow dot. That's from the factory. Yep, they did that. But basically, this this line, this line, this line, and this line will all be flat across this valve cover surface right here, the top of the head. So once you get it to that point, obviously you won't have these lines. These lines are something he drew. Yeah. So I so when I, so basically, if you add if you add a line, so I even wrote I for intake so that I knew this cam was the intake and E for uh, exhaust exhaust side basically you make these lines on here and you don't necessarily have to put it on this plastic guide here but if you put it on the chain and from the cog to the chain cog to the chain in multiple spots and like this line will line up with this line then these line up these line up when you go to put it back together you don't you, have to question you it. line it up there ain't no question in it so basically yeah. then I pulled the bolts out of this bracket here right there to get the intercooler hoses down out of the way and I don't know if you can look in there and see but there is a plus sign in that hole I know I could see it let me see if I can get you some light here yeah when you shine a light in here though I, we won't, might not be able to show you guys here but uh anyways oh yeah you could see it I see you? it for just a second there's there. a plus sign in there and basically that's gonna be at the back corner of this hole, about right here, up in the upper three quarter area. Yeah. Uh, upper quarter area. So it kind of throws you off because everything's in a line up top here, and then that is just a little bit off. Yeah, it's so not... when we did the head studs on my machine, it really threw us off because I'm like, this thing is just a little bit off, and we wanted to make sure it was correct. And timing, timing is not something you want to play with. You have to be sure because it's a no tolerance motor tour. If you put it back together, one tooth off, what you know, off the crank or. Uh, you know, off of one cam, one cam's on, one cam's off, you're going to slap a valve, you know, possibly put a hole in the piston, you're going to cause a lot of damage. So, I always, like... Err on the side of caution. Yeah, well, I second-guess myself 50 times because I don't want no problems. I have yeah. never had any problems. I've done lots of timing on yeah. cars and side-by-sides, and uh, it's just something you over... You check and check and check and check and keep checking. Yeah. And so you could put it on, and then rotate the motor a couple times, by the time you get back to the couple rotations, it could be off. So you have to, once you put your timing back to where it is, you have to rotate it a whole bunch of times and then find top dead center again on cylinder one. Once you do that, your marks should all line up. If they don't line up or if they're off just a little bit, you're off a tooth and you gotta redo it again. Because yeah. if you start that sucker, it's... Yeah, we didn't do all those marks on mine. I did a couple. Yeah, we just did a couple small marks, but, uh, um, he did that because of our experience last time with it. We were I'm just not a little even, bit off. I'm not even so. playing a game yeah. anymore. It's just going to be done and over with. Yeah. So basically, uh, now all that's marked up, all that's top dead center. So basically when you point the lobes you know, upwards like this and those lines are like that, it's taking the most pressure off of the valve springs to where when you disconnect the tensioner, which I'm going to show you in a second, when you pull the tensioner out, it just doesn't flop and slap a valve right there because yep. yeah, if it's off and you pull it yeah, there's, there's no you, ten, there'll be minimal tension yeah right you can now. slap a valve just by the cams turning by you disconnecting the chain so basically uh now you come down here this is your this is your this is your uh timing chain tensioner right here yep. so this main bolt's got a spring in it you don't have to pull that out uh, so basically you're just going to pull this bolt and this bolt there is a gasket here so you want to be careful to try to save that because uh, most of the time you don't get another one mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these two bolts. That's going to then pull out of here, and there's a there's a big long guide right here, and it's pushing 
right up against that chain keeping the slack out of it so that it can't jump on these teeth. Mm -hmm. As soon as you pull this out, it's basically gonna loosen everything else up. Then you can pull these two 10 millimeter bolts and get this guide out of here and you can start taking the cams out. But Yeah, I will uh, show you that too because you don't wanna lose that chain down in there when you start pulling the cams. Right, yet, so, so once I get this tensioner off and I get this top piece off, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this chain up in, a couple, in, in two corners where it can't go nowhere. Yep. And uh, you have to, uh, I'm pretty sure we still have to take these two bolts to get this cog off for the chain to come out. All right, so this is your cam chain tensioner. I accidentally ripped the gasket, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. This is, uh, so it's got two five millimeter Allen bolts to hold it in. I just got everything up here laid out, so I know where it goes. This is the upper guide. You take that off. That is uh, two eight millimeters as well. Uh, then we got, that's a, like a, a support you got a bolt here on this end bolt here on this end and this should be loose I already took it off or I'm, I'm bolted it let's see just be careful taking this off so there's that and two bolts and we will set it up here you're gonna want to have a spot to set these cams how you take them off as well so then this would then go back on there like that and your chains would be then underneath there. I'm just going to set it back together like that. Um, so now where we're at is the tensioner's out, the upper, guide, the upper guide's off. Right here on each cam is a spot to put an open end, in, open end wrench. I'll tell you what size it is in a minute, I forget. Um, basically you're going to have to put a wrench on there. And if you come over here, I think he's saying right here. If you come over here, after you have that wrench on the other side, you'll take that bolt out. And then you'll switch the wrench to the other cam, pull yep. that bolt out. Yep. Then you're going to have to rotate it enough to get to the other bolt that's <coughs> down in there. And then these two cogs will come off. And then you can undo the rest of the cams. But you see how there's already get space in there mm -hmm. in the chain? Yep. That's because there's no tension on it. Right. You just can see the space right there. All right, guys. So you can see right there, um, you got to rotate the motor. So that's why everything's not going to exactly line up. You're going to have to rotate it back around again later. But we have to be able to access the other bolt to get it out of there. So. We went ahead and rotated the motor. We're going to pull these other two bolts and we should be good. All right, so I put a zip tie on each end so that the chain don't drop down I don't want it to jump a tooth on the um, crank so we also got a couple bungees on it keep yeah, tension, got tension on it, on it yep. so should be good there and uh, obviously all your marks and everything will check out if, a, if you put it back properly uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pull each cam completely off and then that gives access to the head bolts that are not accessible that's the whole part that's the whole point behind this is you can't, uh, you can get to some of the head bolts, you can't get to all of them. Yeah. So you have to pull the cams. Yeah, you can see up here, you got access to the left two, and looks like none of the others, so. All right, so 
put some lube on the back side of both washers of the heads for the head studs. This is the spot. This is this is what's going to go down into the block and bottom out. You don't go crazy on this. You just hand tighten it down in there, and until uh, it stops. And I'm just going to run it down in there. It's got an Allen. I'll run it down in there and uh, put a little on here so it makes less resistance as you're trying to tighten it up. So you pull one at a time. There's so a as of right now. I've got one head stud pulled. Here's mm -hmm. one original. Basically, that's this one here. You're going to pull the one out. There's a torque sequence too, right? Yeah, so, okay, so you only pull one at a time, one of the original ones out at a time so you don't lift the head gasket. Mm -hmm. But basically, you pull one at a time. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you pull then torque that one to 50 foot-pounds. Then, you go to the next one, pull that one, put it back in, 50 foot-pounds. You do that to all of them, you get them all done. Once you get them all done, and then there's a torque sequence. When we get to that, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. that. But right now, we're gonna pull one of them out at a time, put it back to 50 foot-pounds. So there's no sequence right now, it's just one out of the No, I don't, okay. it doesn't, doesn't really matter. You just don't wanna take more than one of them out at yep. a time. Yep, all right. So. That's where we're at. And like if you ever had to adjust your uh, the shims in your valves, underneath this is a shim. These are these are valve spring buckets and underneath there's a shim. And so you could pull the valve cover off. We're not really doing this, but you could pull the valve cover off and you could stick um, a feeler gauge underneath there. And so say it's, I don't know for sure, let's just for instance say it's supposed to be ten thousandths. You stick a 10,000 shim underneath there and either it's too loose or too tight and you'd know that it needed adjusted mm -hmm. and basically you'd have to do everything we just did here minus pulling the head bolts pulling the cams out to get to these buckets to then change your shims yeah so maybe if you got some miles on your machine might not be a bad idea if to, it's hard starting or yeah yeah might not be a bad idea to check it out at this point so we're gonna go ahead and torque these down to 50 foot-pounds There's that one. So now we we'll can move on to the other five. So we just got all these torqued down to 50. So like he said, just took it one at a time, uh, work your way through them. So you don't want to pull more than one at a time. So. so your next step will be in a sequence. You're going to do 68 pounds, foot pounds, and you're going to go one. So it'll be one, two, three. No, 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 no. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the next go around after you do that sequence then you're going to go step two is 80 foot pounds go over the pattern three times at 80 foot pounds so mm -hmm. you're going to do 80 in this same pattern three times and then after you get that done uh, the final step is the m6 bolts which are here and here in the, in there you don't do nothing with them until the end and the side bolts you take the m6 side bolts to 10 foot pounds which isn't a lot. All that is is just to keep that seal tightened up and evenly tightened out. Those are baby bolts compared to these head bolts. Yep. So we are going to get the torque wrench dialed up and uh, start on that, and you'll see that in the time lapse.
All right, guys, so you seen we had zip ties and little bungee cords holding the chain up to where it couldn't come down, okay? So this side, there's two bolts holding this cam cog, you know, the chain cog onto the cam. I never took those out, left those in. I actually put the second one back in because I started to take it out. So this one, I had to leave both out because it's kind of a pain uh, so once you start taking this apart, you have to rotate it so you can get to the second bolt and take the second bolt out. So now, how I did it going back together is I put, this is all complete, and I got, I left, make sure you always hold tension on it, and I, you'll see on the other side that all my marks are lined back up there, okay? Now, if you remember, I told you this had to be pointed this way, and this had to be pointed this way, and this channel, had they had to line up. So, they actually make a plate that's specifically for this pro star motor or whatever but i actually found a plate it's just an old part i cut with the cnc machine that was the same thickness as the gap there so i tightened these down by hand i didn't torque these yet so these are just down because when you put this in there's no pressure here but there's pressure on the intake side so i left no bolts in this here see how it still moves there's no bolts in it so i got all the marks lined up on the chain and the cog and everything on and then like I said hand tighten these down and I took my wrench and I spun it into pressure because this lobe has to point this way but they also have to line up so I forced it over stuck the plate in there now the plate is holding it there in place you don't have to do that but it's mm -hmm. easy to it's easy to do um, I'm gonna say that's eight that's eighth inch but eighth inch material so you can just take a straight piece of eighth inch and it would work but you don't you don't need none of that you all your markings that you did out there are what's gonna line everything up so basically just makes life a little easier just life a lot easier so now this stuff is lined up perfect now you go out here I still don't put the bolt in come around here so if you look let me try to get the light off of it can you see that all right yeah. Okay, so that mark lines up. Uh, not all of these marks, some of these marks touch the plastic piece and not necessarily the chain. Mm -hmm. So like that piece is lined that up. That plastic with the piece chain. isn't on there yet. But. This piece is lined up here, this piece is lined up here. The marks, these marks go this way. So mm -hmm. we all we know that. And we and I laid it out there on the on the paper towel with the intake side on the intake side and mm -hmm. the exhaust side on the other side. Yeah. So now after I put that piece of metal in there and locked mm -hmm. them cams tight, the bolt hole lined, perfect, lined nice. up perfect. So okay. now, I haven't put that in, I just let you know that it's loose. Now, without dropping it in the motor, start it. And I would go ahead and, that plate of metal is working as a wrench, so you can go ahead and tighten this up. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I would do is tighten it down pretty good, and then after, after you get that tightened down, you can go ahead and get the tensioner in, and you can rotate the motor to get the other bolt in. To get the other bolt in, and yeah. then rotate the motor. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and torque the top. I'm pretty confident in, you know, all this. I know the light blurs you out a little bit, but I'm trying to just let you get a visual. That's so now cool. the next thing is, is I haven't looked down in that hole, but I haven't rotated it yet. Yeah, so the you crank, still see that plus. But yeah, the plus should still be in there. Let me check that. Plus is rotated a little bit, but it's still there. Yeah, and it's off just a, a skosh, anyways. Right. So, well, there's no. And then when on he it. set, so when he set up the cams up here, this is where he labeled the intake side, the exhaust side. So. And then this is how it came off as well. So this, we would then just pick up like this, and put it back on the motor. Yep, exactly. Just like that. So that's how that goes. So this is the intake side, and this is the exhaust side.
All right, so I got a lot of this buttoned up already, but this retainer here, this would be bolt one, two, and then if I remember right, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you put this cover on, and it'd be eleven and twelve, and they are only torque to seven foot pounds or ten newton meters. And this, there's a sequence. Okay, so. Yeah, There you go. So then, I got the tensioner, the gasket that was ripped, I RTV sealed it, and I got that back in, but I took the center out that holds the tension on it. So now, once I put the spring back in, here's your seal washer. Once I put that in, it's gonna put the pressure back on the cams, and then you can remove that plate that I put in there that's holding the cam. So, basically, this just goes right in the end of this tensioner. So I still have not torqued these. Um, I still have to pull those out one by one and thread lock them, but I like uh, double checking that my timing marks are all on and lined up. So same thing with this. I still have the sensor out. Um, so now the tensioner is in. Um, and that tensioner will automatically adjust. It's got notches on it. And as you spin it, 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 it'll take the slack out and push it and lock it as far out as it can go. So every time that there's slack and it has a chance to bounce out, it'll bounce out and lock right there to where it just keeps the tension out, which when I pushed on this, I just heard it click and lock in some more. So um, I think we're at the point where we can pull that plate and rotate the motor. Uh, you want to lock tight those? Not bolts? yet. Oh, okay. Not yet. As we rotate it, we're going to lock tight those. Yeah. But basically, they're tight right now. There's still one out, one missing. And so as we rotate it for the first time, mm -hmm. we'll, that'll be the first one that gets, it, gets its lock tight but it rotates counterclockwise, so you can go up there, and now's the point where we're gonna rotate it counterclockwise, and I don't know, it'll probably be six or eight revolutions, and you'll see it come back. You wanna see your timing marks hit more than one time. Yeah. You know, you wanna yep. rotate it. Now, if you rotate it once, and you see them, and then you rotate it again, you don't see them, that's normal. I'm All right, so we've rotated it 50 million times, it's just, Something you want to be very sure of, you know. Uh, so you can rotate it and get the cams and the crank in a line um, easier than you can get the chain and your chain marks to line back up again. So basically we've rotated this a whole bunch of times and lines are all straight across the board here. Our lines are marking up here. Only thing that you don't see on here is the chain marks as of right now. But if you were to look right down here in the hole, you can see uh, the the cross mark on the fly. Yeah, the wheel. one that we showed you guys earlier. You can probably can see, see it, it right now, now pretty good. Let's see. Uh, see it? Not really, but anyways. Yeah, it's there. Anyways, I can see it. It's not like, so here's the hole. It's not center of the hole. It's like just a smidge off. It's just it's over here. Yeah. So and it really center. threw us for a loop on my machine because it was the exact same way. Yeah. And, and it like, just had a second guess on ourselves. Why would be centered? Yeah. But anyways, all the marks lined up. Uh, I gapped the plugs to twenty thousandths, threw them back in, spun over by hand. It's got good compression. If you look at the top, the lobes are sticking the right way. Yep. The slots should still be lined up. These lobes over here, that's what he's talking about. So we're gonna go ahead and Stick throw out. the valve cover on this. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll probably be the end of this video here, so. Yep, there's valve cover to put on, uh, two spark plug wires. I gotta put the one bolt back in that sensor that mm -hmm. goes back in, I think it's a, a crankshaft position sensor. Gotta put that back in. 
and for head studs, that's done. Injectors, you guys never have to now. worry about it again, luckily. <laughs> yeah, unless you got to pop the, unless you pop a head gasket down the road or something. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, we've been rocking wheels two years on. Uh, the well, E85 with some. Yeah, E85 with uh, some power behind it. and uh, those head studs, and haven't had a problem, so I'm very confident in this. And I've done this. That's probably my fourth razor setup like this that I've done, but I've done lots and lots of cars, which is still nerve-wracking as well. But yeah. you get the idea. Uh, the head studs comes with directions, so you can read through that. But it's always easier to have somebody show you firsthand than to just read some directions because yeah, it's not that simple. But and then you also get to see some personal experience, someone that's actually experienced we didn't, doing it. We did wills right before we started the YouTube channel, so we didn't have that on footage. But it was actually probably more nerve-wracking than this. So... Got the valve cover, everything buttoned up. I'm not going to put the heat shield back on because I have to pull the turbo. So I'm going to pull the turbo tomorrow. Yep. And uh, everything is back together. So make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. We've got a lot of things coming. Uh, you know, if you guys are watching from YouTube only, go check us out on Facebook and Instagram if you guys, you know, have those platforms. Um... We're in the process of building a track, which some footage for that will be coming out shortly as well. Actually, probably by the time this is up. Yeah, we might have something going. That'll probably be up by then. Um, anyways, we're in the process of trying to build the track, have a closer place to go rip. But like, share, subscribe. Thanks. We'll see you again. sooner than he was that's for sure we'll see what happens